Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Hector Vasquez, and in today's short tutorial, I want to provide you with some tips that will help you expand your research from just using one article using Google Scholar. You know, Google Scholar is often the database that most students gravitate towards because, of course, Google is a search engine that we use on a day-to-day -day basis, so that familiarity with the platform makes it easy for them to gravitate towards Google Scholar. Some professors will tell you that Google Scholar is not a, you know, viable source to use uh, to look for articles and to do your research because not all articles presented are peer-reviewed, but I'm actually going to provide you a way to linking your Google Scholar to your institution where they will provide you with the reliable sources that are, again, linked to your institution that are peer-reviewed. So the one key thing that most, and unfortunately some professors, do not promote this because of the fact that they're missing this one key component is going to settings and linking your institution to Google Scholar. So simply type in your institution's name. Once it's linked, as you'll see here, I have two linked. It'll automatically now pull articles that your library subscribes to from the journals. So without doing this, you may come across many articles that you're interested in. And when you click on it, you'll see that it'll ask you to pay. And the reason it's asking you to pay for that article is because your library at your institution does not subscribe to it. So the first thing again is linking your library by simply going to settings, library links, and now all resources pulled will be strictly from your library and it'll again be peer reviewed articles and then we can move on with the process of doing the research. Once you've linked, you can get back to Google Scholar and again, conduct your research as you would, you know, uh, typically. Now, for this example, I'm going to use uh, search terms that a student came to me earlier this week. He was having a hard time finding articles and kind of stressing over it. But in a matter of 10 minutes, you know, we were able to find the 10 sources he needed uh, by some of these tips that I'm going to pretty much provide you with today. So his search terms were angry parents and adolescents. He was looking to provide, uh, look, doing research on an issue and then providing solutions. So the first thing he was looking for is, what the issue was and the correlation between angry parents and the impact it had on their children. So we did a simple two keywords, angry parents and adolescents, and we went from since 2019. And this first article is an article that he was interested in. Now from this article, I simply told him, just scroll down and look at the references. You know, once you find an article you like, you read through it, look at the references that they use for their article. You know, so, so we all find references that we're going to use to write an article. This is exactly what this process is. They've referenced many different articles here. You can look through these articles and now just copy and paste the title of the article into the search bar to see if you have access to it. And again, these are all multiple sources, again, that are provided to you really without you searching for them. They're, in a sense, handed to you. So once you find that one article you like, expand to the references that they use to write their own article and you're gonna find many, many other sources. <clears throat> the other thing you can also do is look at the authors. The authors for a particular article are, and within that field usually publish again in that specific field. So if you find this article you know, very insightful, look at the authors, copy and paste the author's names into Google Scholar, see what else they also publish that, that is out there. Because once you're an expert in the field, you're usually you know, publishing within that field uh, consistently. And then the last thing I wanna mention is cited by. So this cited by button is simply, in a sense, the same thing kind of what I just explained to you, but it's also showing you that this article was cited by other articles. So as you can see, the number here on the screen is cited by 30. If you click on this cited by 30, it's going to provide you with 30 other articles that cited the original article you were looking at. So again, now you have not only from the references from the previous article, you now have an additional 30 articles you can, you know, you can look through. And again, as you can see, this first article, if you were to like this article, now it's cited by 12. Now you can expand this as well. So we started off with one article. We looked at the references from the first article, which were, it looked like more than 15. Then it had cited by 30. Now we have cited by 12. Now we have cited by 19. So by using one article, you simply expanded the number of articles you, know, you have access to. And again, we weren't going article to article to start off. We started with just one article. So again, like I said, this is what research is. It's really just reviewing the literature, finding something you like. And within that article, again, if you want to take the traditional route of doing research, read the article. You may find terms in there that you didn't think of. And, and we did come across a few terms. For instance, angry parents and adolescents, maltreatment was another word we used uh, to do a search. But the point is, is those are, you know, those are words that you find within the article itself that you know, now you can plug and play with. Um, but at the end of the day, like I said, find an article you like, 
and use that as a foundation for your research and expand by just looking at the references that were used within that article. And if you're using Google Scholar, clicking on the cited by button will again provide you with more articles you can use uh, to expand your research um, without, you know, trying to um, waste so much time just trying to find the right keywords. So hopefully you found this video helpful, insightful. If you have any comments, questions, drop them in the comments section. Um, if not, I will catch you on the next video.